Megan. Today's video is going to be about common houseplant pests and treatment for how to get rid of those um, and what you can try to look for when you're purchasing a plant, a plant or when you're at home just trying to see if your plant is infested by pests. So the first one that we're going to talk about today is just brown scale. You see this a lot on your plants. Um, oftentimes people don't really realize that it is a pest. It's like a brown hard shelled little bump that kind of appears on your plant. Um, and so how it first starts is that the when they're young, the scale are young, they're actually mobile and they can travel through the plant um, and kind of take all of the nutrients by sucking it out of the plant. But when they become adults, they'll stay permanently stuck in one place for the rest of their life, which you know is like 60 days, something like that. So they'll just keep reproducing though after that. So if you see scale, it's not just gonna go away. It's gonna keep reproducing and you'll start seeing little bumps on the stems of your plant. Sometimes you see it on the leaves, um, more, more so in the nooks and crannies and the stems of your plant. So be aware of that, kind of look for the difference between like maybe a little root coming out rather than a little bump of scale. Um, you can definitely look at pictures of this on the internet to kind of give you a better idea of what it looks like and what to look for. As far as treating it, um, they are pretty, they can be a little hard to treat just because they do have such a hard uh, shell. So it's really hard to penetrate with, um, you know, sprays. Uh, and a few things like that. So there are a few options that you can do. One is you can go directly to the scale, use an alcohol swab or pour a little alcohol on a tissue paper and just start trying to pull it off um, or scrape it off. But it's also something that has eggs and stuff that could spread through the plant. That's why it's important to kind of wipe everything down with the alcohol or spray it down with alcohol when you are removing the scale. Also, it would help if you put a plastic bag or like saran wrap on the base of your pot so that if any scale does fall out, it does not go into the soil and you can just clean it up really nice and easy and start continue, continuing to um, treat your plant for what it is. So neem oil is a good spray option for that. Um, it is gonna be just a direct spray that you can just spray directly onto the scale that you see on your plant. Um, super easy, you'll just keep reapplying it, follow your instructions. Um, you, I mean, you can do a couple different treatments at once if you have a really bad outbreak of scale, but other than that, you can stick with the neem oil or scraping it off with the alcohol swab. We also do sell a horticultural spray. This will also help with um, the scale. I kind of noticed that the neem oil helps the most with scale besides the alcohol and the removal of the scale. Um, and we also sell another product that's just an insect insecticidal soap. So these all say different things, but they're all insecticides. They're all really great for the pest that you're gonna find on your plant. It's very common if you have a pest on your plant, it's not the end of the world. Just pay attention to that so you can treat it and nip it in the bud real quick. So the next pest that we're gonna talk about is also very, very, very common. It's mealybug. Um, oftentimes it's mistaken for a fungus or a mold that's growing on your plant because of a, its white fuzziness that it'll leave and kind of form around itself. Um, it's not a fungus actually an unarmored form of scale. It's gonna be kind of squishier, but um, they will you know, attack your plant pretty quickly. They reproduce very quickly. Um, if you see it on your plant at first and there's just like maybe one or two little mealybug, you can just you know, get it off with your thumb or finger and spray your horticultural spray, your neem oil, your insecticidal soap onto that area so that there, it just killed everything that's maybe even left. So be, be wary for like these little tiny white fuzzy insects and they'll, they'll also um, congregate in the nooks and crannies of your plant which actually makes it super, super hard to get rid of it. Even though you kind of don't see it on the outside, they could be deep within the, the nooks and cracks of your plant. Um, another way that you can take care of this situation is spraying your plant down with some water really hard. Um, not too hard that it hurts the plant, but hard enough that you'll get rid of and decimate most of the family of mealybug that are on your plant. Um, you can also take it in the shower and rinse it off. 
If it's too hard for you to do that, you can definitely just use one of your insecticidal um, soaps or whatever it is to keep applying that and keep wiping off the mealy bug as you see it. Um, eventually, if you take enough out, of, you decimate enough of the, the family of mealy bug on your plant um, and you're reapplying and you're being really good about reapplying your insecticides, it should treat your plant and it will thrive a lot better. Um, they'll just suck the nutrients right out of your plant and over time it's really going to make your plant sad and droopy and whatever it is that your plant does when it's not happy. So, um, so yeah, just try to attack that mealybug situation in this form or with a hose. Our next common pest is called white fly. Um, they literally are what they sound like. They're just little tiny white flies with um, little wings. You'll start seeing them kind of fly around your plants and your, your living room, whatever it is. Um, they m are just mostly annoying. So, however though, their um, babies, nymphs, will suck out the nutrients from your plant. So it's still gonna damage your plant in that, in that way. But as far as the white flies that our adults go that are just flying around, um, those are just more of an annoyance. So how to get rid of that is you can use the systemic that kind of you put in the soil so that um, you don't have any more eggs and the babies keep on you know coming out and flying out of the soil or um, consuming your plant in any way so use a systemic we also sell a form called mosquito bits it's going to be a granular um, systemic that you want to put on your the top of your soil um, and then as you water you're going to be watering this poison in there that the plant will suck up. It's not bad for the plant, but it's not good for any of the pests that attack your plant. So this is a really good way to get rid of that. Another one that you want to do um, is going to be the house plant stakes, the little sticky papers. Um, there's a lot of these that you can see and find. The white flies are attracted to more of a yellow color. So um, they make them in yellow sticky sheets, so it kind of attracts them more to it. And so using a combination of both the sticky traps and the mosquito bits is gonna be a really good way to get rid of the larva and eggs and you know babies in the soil, whatever it is, and killing the adults so that they stop doing that into the other plant's soil that you have at home. So both of these at the same time. Same goes with fungus gnats. Um, these are going to be the best way to get rid of those as well. Those little annoying little flies that you see that just hang around your face at home. So get rid of that with these two products. So the next uh, pest we're going to talk about is fungus gnats. I know I kind of covered that a little bit just a little bit ago, but um, those are just going to be like the little black flies that you kind of see around. They lay their eggs in the soil. They do the same thing. You want to treat it with mosquito bits and your sticky traps. Um, they won't really harm your plant so much. They kind of prefer eating more like fungusy kind of things, but that doesn't mean that they won't eat your plant or like take some nutrients from your plant. So just try to get rid of that. And then, I mean, you're gonna be a lot happier without these little flies flying around. So um, those are what, that's what you're gonna wanna do for the fungus gnats. So spider mites is a very common um, pests that you see, they're really, really, really hard to see. They're very, very tiny little red looking spiders. Sometimes you can see them, but for the most part, they're very, very hard to see. So a good way of telling if you have spider mites on your plant is they'll just leave like these little webs and like little webbings through the cracks of your plant, through the leaves. You'll kind of just see these little webs form. That's a good indication that your plant has spider mites. Um, and spider mites will cause your plant to kind of your leaves to turn brown and they they do damage your plant so um, they're kind of a pesky a pesky thing to get rid of it's kind of hard with how many there could be and how little they are and how hard it is to kind of notice that your plant even has spider mites at first um, spider mites also really don't like humidity they really thrive off of more of a dry climate so you can always keep a humidifier in your house or by your plant um, when you think there's spider mites on it as well as treating it for the spider mites through an insecticidal soap or a neem oil is a very common thing to use since it's just a mild nice safe uh, insecticide so 
You can also hose down your plant if it's not going to be a pain in the butt to either take it to the shower or take it outside and hose it down. Um, but otherwise, if it is like a giant plant or it's something that you don't necessarily want to move, but it does have spider mite, just soak it down with one of your insecticides and just keep an eye on it and make sure that you're reapplying it as you need. Um, keep looking through all of the nooks and crannies, making sure that there's nothing left and just keep on top of that and you should uh, not have so many spider mites and it won't travel to your other plants. So that is how you'll take care of the spider mites. Lastly, I do wanna bring up aphids. I know that's not so much of a common house plant pest that you'll see at home, but um, this is kind of the time when people start taking their plants outside from inside. They'll take their cactus out or you know whatever they have that can kind of tolerate the outdoors. Um, people are gonna start doing that. If you do do that, it is more susceptible to getting some kind of pests on it from the outdoors. Right now you see a lot of aphids outside because we got all of our vegetables going. It was kind of a wetter season. Um, so you want to keep an eye on the house plants that you are gonna be bringing inside if they do have aphid. Um, they're super, they are super easy to get rid of. They can be a pain in the butt if they're just really accumulated onto that plant. You just would probably, the best bet would be just to completely spray and soak down your plant. Another good way to treat aphids is going to be through ladybugs. This is gonna be something that you can do outside with your house plants. You do not wanna bring the ladybugs into your house because they'll go everywhere and then you'll find a bunch of dead ladybugs. So put it outside, let it treat for the late, or with the ladybugs. Um, and so if you don't want to do the ladybug thing, you can totally use an insecticidal soap, something like that, spray directly onto the plant where you're noticing a bunch of the aphids and monitor your plants when you bring them back inside because you really don't want to bring in those nasty pests to your other plants. Um, and that could really very well happen. They, they can travel really easily. They can multiply really fast. So you want to catch it really fast and you want to protect your plants as best as you can if you're bringing them from outside into the inside. So if you're picking out a plant from any garden center or wherever you want to buy your plant from, make sure that you're in inspecting your plant for pests before you purchase it um, anywhere you go. It's really hard for places that sell plants to not have any kind of pests. It's not going to be ever like 100% clear of pests no matter where you go so I mean I, I know King Super sells plants Walmart sells plants those kind of places anywhere you buy your plant inspect it it could have uh, bugs it could have pests so um, yeah try to be be careful about what you're bringing back home to your house because you don't want any of those pests to travel here at Bath we really try to inspect all of our plants treat our plants if we ever see anything. Um, we really like to be on top of being thorough and making sure that our, our plants aren't gonna have um, pests on them as we're selling them as they go out the door. It's, but like I said, it's never gonna completely be 100% clear of pests. They're always gonna be something that could slip through the cracks. Um, so just make sure that you're investigating what's going on with it, you're checking the nooks and crannies so that you're not bringing any of those pests back to your house. It's important for you to be able to identify when your, pest, when your plant has a pest. So um, just be prepared for those kind of things and treat things as they need to be treated. So thank you for watching this video. Um, if you have any questions about pests or any questions about plants at all, please feel free to give us a call. We're more than happy to talk about it with you.